Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at electrostatic force, electric fields, detecting electric fields, and then we'll finish with a summary. We're first going to talk about a force called the electrostatic force. Some objects have a property called charge. And we have two objects that possess charge here. Charge can be either positive or negative. So this charge on the left is positive, and this charge on the right is negative. Objects with no charge are said to be neutral. And here's an example of a neutral particle. Its charge is equal to zero. Objects that have opposite charges exert an attractive force on one another. They pull each other in. So here we have two oppositely charged particles. One is positive and one is negative. And they're going to experience an attractive force towards each other. Objects with the same type of charge exert a repulsive force on one another. They push each other out of the way. So here we have two sets of like charges. These two positive charges are going to experience a repulsive force away from each other. And similarly with these negative charges, they will also experience a repulsive force. This force between stationary objects with charge is called the electrostatic force. And here it is, repelling the light charges away from each other and attracting the opposite charges towards each other. The electrostatic force is non-contact and this means that the objects do not need to touch each other to exert this force. So the charges are not touching and yet they still experience this electrostatic force, moving them either towards each other or away from each other. We're now going to discuss what an electric field is. The electrostatic force between two charged objects is non-contact. So even though these charges are not touching, they still exert an attractive force on each other. This means that the electrostatic force must be due to a force field. And we've drawn some lines of this force field here. These are called field lines. Any charged object that is inside another charged object's force field will experience a force. For example, this positive charge is inside the negative charge's force field. And therefore, it's going to experience a force. Each charged object will have its own individual force field due to its charge. So note how both of these charged objects have their own force field. You might be wondering about the direction of the arrows on the field lines. Don't worry about these for now, but just notice that they're different for the positive charge as they are for the negative charge. The force field that a stationary object creates due to its charge is called an electric field. These electric fields are created by these charges. The arrows that represent an electric field show the direction that a positive charge will move in that field. So we can see that a positive charge is being pushed away by another positive charge. It's being repelled. By contrast, a positive charge placed within the force field of a negative charge is going to be pulled in. It's going to be attracted towards the negative charge. Electric fields are similar to gravitational fields in the sense that they are a force field that an object creates due to one of its properties. So here's an electric field created by a negative charge. And this is similar to a gravitational field being created by a mass. So a gravitational field occurs due to an object's mass and it exerts force on objects with mass. This gravitational field exerts a force on the mass in a field. An electric field occurs due to an object's charge and exerts a force on objects with charge. So here's a depiction of an electric field due to charge. And we can see that it exerts a force on a charge within the field. Because these two charges are oppositely charged, this force is attractive. Now let's think about how we can detect electric fields. Electric fields between objects of the same type of charge can be demonstrated using a gold leaf 
and a ball with a fixed positive charge. So this ball has a fixed positive charge and here we have a thin gold leaf. A thin piece of gold leaf is attached to the bottom of an insulator and has no charge at the start of the experiment. So the gold leaf is initially neutral. It is brought momentarily into contact with a positively charged sphere. The positively charged sphere is brought into contact with the gold leaf and it is going to transfer positive charge to the gold leaf. This contact gives the gold leaf a positive charge. Holding the gold leaf near the positively charged ball will now cause the gold leaf to experience a repulsive force. So now both of these objects are positively charged and we know that like charges repel. So the gold leaf is going to feel a repulsive force which we're going to call Fe away from the ball. And this is because both the gold leaf and the ball have a positive charge. This force gets weaker when the gold leaf is moved away from the ball. So when they are separated by a small distance, the gold leaf is going to feel some force Fe. If it is moved away and is now at a greater distance from the ball, it's going to experience a weaker force, Fe. The gold leaf is also going to create an electric field due to its charge. So because the gold leaf is now positively charged, it's going to create an electric field. And this will also exert a force on the ball equal to the electrostatic force the ball exerts on the gold leaf. So they're going to experience equal and opposite repulsion. We look for the force on the gold leaf because the gold leaf's smaller mass means the force makes the gold leaf move more than the sphere does. So although both the ball and the gold leaf experience the same force, repelling them away from each other, the gold leaf is lighter, so it has the more observable effect. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or buy smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.